Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! I want to turn to um, some comments made by uh, Claire Fox, who is one of the Brexit Party's new candidates. She's a long-standing advocate of free speech, and she's been giving, a ver giving various interviews about her uh, foray into the front line of party politics now. And in the course of one of those interviews with the Daily Telegraph, and we'll speak to the interviewer in a few moments' time, Christopher Hope, she talked about her long-standing advocacy of freedom of speech to the extent that, she says, the government should not ban people from watching images of children being sexually abused and things like jihadi videos online. She absolutely deplores those things, and it's very, very important that we get that in early. She's not saying that these things are good, but if you advocate personal freedom, she says, Claire Fox, she feels very uncomfortable with the idea of the state, the government, regulating your freedom to the extent that you wouldn't be able to access this stuff, even though you would rightly face the consequences of doing so. And I wonder what you make of that. If you believe in personal freedom, don't you also have to extend that to the most horrendous areas of life that nobody would want to be seen in support of at all, but that there can't be a law that removes your personal freedom to choose whether or not to break it. So the government going round and the security services going round and eradicating videos of jihadi violence, jihadi recruitment or child sexual exploitation is an attack on your freedom. I'm, we'll come on to what I think about it in a minute, and we'll speak to Christopher Hope. Have a listen, though, to what Claire Fox said. This is a, a, a clip of her speaking to Chris Hope from The Telegraph about this issue of personal responsibility and freedom. Just to be quite clear, talk about, you, you don't think child videos should be banned, but you do think child pornography should be banned on the internet? I think child pornography itself is illegal, and therefore it wouldn't exist. But the yet. videos... But the, I, I do not want to give the state and the authorities the right to ban things on the internet. No ifs. It's hard, that, of being abolished know, nowadays. It's important to not constantly be threatened and terrorised into backing off from a free speech position because vile people use that speech to, uh, and abuse that speech to say or, or, or do horrible things. Claire Fox speaking to Chris Hope of The Telegraph. Christopher Hope joins me now, Chief Political Correspondent, Assistant Editor of The Daily Telegraph. Thank you for coming on, uh, Mr Hope. Um, Hi, Tom. Uh, we played the clip there of, of what she said. I, I'm very keen to hear from you what you took from the interview of her and what, what the point was that she was making. I'm fascinated. I should say, he was talking to a podcast I do called Chopper's Brexit Podcast. If any of your listeners want to hear the full, full interview, it's yeah, there online yeah. for free to listen to. Um, what well, she was saying, I mean, she comes, she cut from a different cloth, and we are seeing, I think, quite an impressive group of it of um, people coming forward <clears throat> to stand, particularly for the Brexit Party, I think, uh, and Change UK, less so for UKIP in my view. Mm. But I think she, she comes from this position of that really the internet should be a space where anything can be said, nearly anything can be said. She's not advocating any kind of criminality, of course, but she's expressing concern about banning things, saying, how does that help? So banning jihadi videos, is that going to really help? No, you know, she's not pro any of the activity of jihadis, mm. or, or clearly not of paedophiles, but she's merely saying, why are we banning things? And it just, I, I, I went to the um, launch of when she was unveiled on Tuesday by Nigel Farage, and I said to him, um, this is all very well, and he had on stage there an army veteran, Claire Fox, a charity worker. And Claire Fox, don't forget, you know, is from the far left of British politics. And I said to him, it's all very well gathering here, uh, Nigel, but when are you going to actually have a manifesto? Because uh, the only way you can get that group of good people in one space on the same platform is by saying, we want Brexit, full stop, mm -hmm. nothing else discussed. But what about tax policy, what about defence policy, other areas? And that's why... And the, all I was really doing was going through a record of views and, and talking about them, and they will become more scrutinised as we get towards um, election day. And, and the, the issue with this one, because it's so, because you have to be so careful about the language you use around this issue of freedom, freedom of expression, but consequences to that freedom, 
And, yes. and you're, I, I noticed that you're keen in, in the write-up of the interview, and also you put the audio out, which is always helpful of what she actually said. There is no suggestion that she is saying that these things are good and should be supported. No, 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 but no, it, no, 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 yeah, absolutely not. No, ab I, I completely got that. But in, but in certain, people will feel that in saying that somebody has the freedom to be able to access this stuff, that that is in a way supporting the kind of activities that they would take part in, which is... And she would argue stuff. completely against that, and she just doesn't want the government to get involved in the internet. She, I mean, she's you know, the internet started as this pure thing, and in fact, internet companies benefited from the fact that it was seen as lawless for a long period, and it's only really mm. becoming more controlled by laws recently, and we're not even there yet, are we, um, with our social harm white paper out last week. But they're getting towards that point. They're not there yet. I think, you know, Claire's a classic case of someone who's never really had to have, have these views properly challenged by journalists because she's a journalist herself or a commentator. Yeah. Um, so it's interesting watching Russian people come out of their shells and say what they believe. Um, I, I, I really respect her. I think she's a, she's a great fresh, a, a breath of fresh air in, in British politics. Um, but, you know, one has to ask about her views, so one does. And, and it's certainly an interesting view to hold and one that we'll, we'll talk about for the next hour or so. Christopher, I'm grateful to you for your time. And uh, I must say, too, particularly on this day, which I know, as you've written about in the Daily Telegraph, is a difficult day for your family for reasons you can read in Christopher Hope's piece in the Daily Telegraph. So thank you for your time, Christopher Hope, Chief political correspondent and assistant editor of the Daily Telegraph. I'm very keen to get across the idea that there is no suggestion that anybody is saying that these things, jihadi videos, jihadi activities, or the sexual abuse of children are, are something that should be heralded, that something should be good, that something should be said that should be supported. Nobody is suggesting that. No right-minded, right-thinking person would ever suggest that. It's interesting, though, I think, that if you believe in personal freedom, that individuals have the right to do whatever they want to do, but face the consequences of that, activities that prevent you from exercising that freedom to look at jihadi videos, to carry a knife around the streets of the UK, if you want to bring it back to our last conversation, those activities that stop you from doing that are preventing personal freedom, and that is always, some would argue, a bad thing. I'm not there with that argument, I have to say. I, I'm afraid I don't buy the idea. We, we basically all agree that looking at images of kids being sexually assaulted or propaganda videos made by people that are, uh, are beheading innocent people and throwing them off buildings is such a grave ill that regardless of the abilities you have to go and look at it, you shouldn't be able to because of the damage that having that stuff out there does to those children and to wider society. That's the bargain we accept. We accept that you might have the freedom to go and do so, but we're going to limit your freedom to do that because because the freedom that you have in order to do it is damaging everybody else. Isn't that the argument there? And it's all very well to say personal responsibility, freedom of expression, the internet should be in a, a, a place where there are no barriers, that it's completely free and open. I'm afraid, I think if you want to live in a society that doesn't uh, have deregulation of all criminality, you're going to have to put up some barriers, and particularly around child sexual exploitation, child sexual abuse, images of that, and also around crimes such as terrorism, those barriers ought to be erected. 0345 6060973. Having said all that, <laughs> a lot of you getting in touch already, 84850 to text, saying that you agree with Claire Fox, that speech can be free or not free. It is binary. So either you are in a position where you think that there is freedom of speech and freedom of expression that, that is being curtailed by having algorithms put out by those who would seek to look after us that try and take this kind of imagery down from the internet, therefore limiting freedom of speech, or you accept that that has to happen and your freedom of speech curtailed because this, why, why would you want to guarantee the ability of somebody to go and look at images of child sexual abuse? I find that absolutely extraordinary and a bit worrying. You see, I, I get the argument that she is making, but you're on the wrong side of the argument, aren't you? Putting yourself on the side of people who want to go and look at that rather than on the side of the people who want to stop it from happening. 0345 973 Another one from Lynn. I totally agree with Claire, Fo Claire Fox. The relentless slide towards authoritarian control is more terrifying to me. It's all about precedent. I don't think, actually, in the cases of images of children being sexually abused, it is about the precedent of freedom of speech. 
Actually, it's about the precedent of stopping these kids being abused because the reason why they're abused, because it's monetized by perverts and disgusting individuals looking at this stuff, that, that's, that's the precedent that's got to be unwound rather than your precedent for, for looking at it in the first place. 0345 6060973, does it speak to a wider issue that you see around freedom of speech, freedom of expression, particularly on the internet, where it's much harder to regulate this stuff anyway, it's much more up for discussion about whether some of these um, big internet companies are a platform or a provider and what responsibility they have to regulate this kind of stuff, and that the internet is always going to contain these kinds of horrific, vile images. If you want them, you'll be able to search them out. So the idea of trying to get rid of them anyway is a losing battle. You might as well accept that people do have the freedom to see this stuff, accept that they're going to try and search it out and just punish them for when they do it. 0345 6060973. You can text 84850. You can tweet at LBC. Should the state be intervening and removing these images of child pornography and jihadi videos, or should they take a step back in the name of freedom? Your calls to come, 2.15. Well, yeah. let's talk about Claire then, um, because Claire Fox, uh, yesterday you announced your candidacy for the Brexit party. Let's have a listen. I've spent my whole life fighting for left-wing causes, so I can tell you no one is more surprised than me to be standing as a candidate for Nigel Farage's Brexit party. <laughs> Claire, what happened to being a revolutionary communist? Well, it's an interesting thing because people have said to me, you've come a long way, look at your journey. <laughs> I can tell you something, I haven't gone very far. Mm. I was always a Democrat, I stand as a Democrat. Everyone says they're a Democrat. Yeah, but it's what, who have travelled a far way? And my <clears> peers <throat> on the left who spent decades telling me how the European Union was a front for multinationals, undemocratic, unaccountable, and suddenly when push came to shove, the one time they were asked, they all fled. And so, actually, I feel as though I've kind of stood still. And I find myself in a situation where, having watched for three years, been on this programme and discussed it, all of the mainstream politicians spend so much time in Parliament doing anything and everything but delivering on the EU referendum So result. is that why it's not so strange that you're bedfellows with Nigel Farage? Because these days you are actually more of a libertarian contrarian, much like him. Your leftism is now something of a dim and distant memory. Um, I, well, it depends. Your contrarianism point is cheap, in my opinion. Is I don't it or go isn't it true? No. I don't go along with orthodoxies. Mm. I try and oh. speak honestly. That doesn't mean that if somebody says black, I say white. That would be but childish. But that is the, that is the accusation yes. from mainly people on the left. It I is, give you people like is. George Monbiot, yes. who basically people. say that you are that contrarian. You do exactly that. You say yeah. white if others say black. George Monbiot and I don't agree on environmental politics, no. for example, so he does hit jobs in The Guardian on me. What can I say? Well, I, It's what happens in politics. I understand that. But, but you know, what I say is I'm standing on liberty, on free speech, on democracy. And, you know, I watched that Peter Lee film recently, right? I mean, what an inspiring film that is about those Manchester mill workers uh, 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 fighting for uh, one person, one vote. Can you imagine uh, standing on a tradition like that on the left and watching people just absolutely saying, well, overthrow, revoke, do anything but deliver on this vote? Right, for me, that is a left-wing tradition I'm proud to be associated with. And people with. will want to look at your record, Claire, because yeah. now you are a politician. You're going absolutely. to be standing in these elections but since the early 2000s would you agree that you're more likely to have been seen promoting GM foods for example criticizing multiculturalism taking issue with the Me Too campaign um, and that associates you more closely with the right uh, no I don't think any of those things do I'm very enthusiastic about economic development GM foods I think are a way of solving world poverty and I've always been passionate about the developing world and I believe in development. On the Me Too question, as somebody who's fought for women's rights for a long time, I've objected to a kind of orthodoxy that says that you have to sign up to Me Too. I fear that it's encouraged a, a kind of victim feminism, but I've also been completely opposed to, <coughs> guess what, sexual harassment and uh, women being treated as second class citizens. And uh, what was the other accusation? I can't even remember now. Multiculturalism. But multiculturalism, because I've absolutely always felt that multiculturalism did something very damaging. So it said, fed the seeds of identity politics. I have fought for um, uh, open immigration. 
which is one thing I disagree with uh, Nigel Farage on. I've thought that it should be decided democratically, but multiculturalism is a system that basically refuses to treat people as people and individuals and go for equal rights and so, actually boxes them into their cultural identities. Right, in terms of immigration... That's, by the way, a fine left-wing point of view as well. <laughs> well, so you, know. you may say that. Um, on immigration, in terms of disagreeing yeah. with Nigel Farage, what are you saying? You'd like to see more immigration? What, I, what I've always thought... So if you want more immigration, yeah, no, go for the Brexit no, party. I, I, what I've always thought was that there should be a proper national conversation about what kind of immigration policies we have. There'll be those who said we've had quite a big conversation no, no, about it. we haven't been able to decide it, because if you have no control over your borders, so there would be an argument about how liberal that would be. You know, when I was fighting uh, against deportations, which I would still do, mm. uh, the hostile environment, which I have nothing but contempt for, Theresa May, a Remainer, assuming that all of the Brexit voters are racist, thinks, oh, good, we'll use this to kick British citizens out of the country. Despicable. I am an anti-racist, but believes that I have to convince All right. my fellow citizens All right. on an issue like demo on Let immigration. Something That's fair enough. Surely. Something else in, in your past and on your record. In 2000, the magazine you co-published, yeah. LM, which was previously called Living Marxism, yeah. was forced to close after falsely accusing ITN journalists of misrepresenting footage of an emaciated Bosnian Muslim at a Serbian internment camp. Do you regret that? No, we lost a libel case. I know that you as a journalist will understand that libel is used to close down free speech and free media. But it was proven to be wrong. No, uh, in fact, what happened was, as the judge said, it was factu factually accurate what we wrote, but we were guilty of libel because of the way the libel laws So you ruled. stand by that? I can't, I, first of all, I can't go into the details because it's a libel question, so don't get me into that one again. No, I do, I do not regret at all. And I thought then for free speech and for press freedom. I thought that a major news organisation using the libel laws to close down a small independent magazine was not their finest hour. And I think that the article that was published was done so in good faith. But libel is used to silence the media. It will have been used against the BBC Just and very fine media organisations over the years. Before I come to um, Leila Moran, in terms of going further, um, with this party, the Brexit party, because at the moment the sole aim is to deliver Brexit. And you say that you don't agree with Nigel Farage on everything, but he does have a vision for Britain. So you are signing yourself up to a party and his vision for renewal, as he calls it, in Britain. Are you signed up? to that manifesto? I'm, uh, there is no manifesto No, but I mean such. it in a no, non-paper. No. And, and I have signed up to stand in the European elections because I met so many voters who were almost in tears saying, I'll never vote again, I can't believe it. D democracy sold out. That I felt that it was about time that someone on the left stood up stepped up, I do so nervously, mm -hmm. and say, actually, I stand with you. I've taken my inspiration from Leave voters who've not been intimidated by name-calling or nasty accusations of being on the far right or worse than Nazis. And what I felt was, in this instance, for these European elections, the Brexit party was the only party, and Nigel Farage takes credit for this, of actually saying, we will see through the decision to leave the EU, no ifs, no buts. All right. So I stand on that. Who knows what the future brings? Let's do So for it's a now. risk in that sense. It's a risk. Um, Politics is a risk. Uh, Fox, the, uh, one of the candidates for the new Brexit party, describing child pornography as illegal and vile and saying, quote, this is not about defending child pornography, child sexual exploitation. This is about fighting censorship and fighting for free speech. She says, I actually don't think we should ban jihadi videos because I don't think that is what causes the issue of Islamist violence. We have to confront these things beyond banning them. Ah, uh, as this text says on 84850, why stop there? Let's not ban anything, drugs or guns or drink driving or discrimination or slander or libel. These things are harmful, that's why we ban them. By allowing access, you facilitate these actions. I, I, can, I have to say I completely agree with that texter's point. Although lots of people would make the argument, as Claire Fox does, that by doing that you could tail their freedom of speech, freedom of expression, personal liberty. I'm happy to have mine curtailed if this is the response, if this is the action that's that it's preventing people from doing. 0345 6060973. Let's turn to Katie Russell, national spokesperson for rape crisis in England and Wales. Hi, Katie. Hi. What do you make of what Claire Fox has said there? I fully appreciate that she says she's not condoning um, so-called child pornography, but we have to be 100% clear here. There is no such thing as child pornography. What people describe as child pornography 
are imagery and videos of child sexual abuse, the sexual abuse of a child, which Quite. we understand all of us, I think, can have wide-ranging, long-term impacts on that child for the rest of their life. Um, nearly half of all the victims and survivors who we work with at our specialist rape crisis centres across England and Wales are adult survivors of child sexual abuse, so people who have been living with the impacts of those experiences for years, if not decades, and still need our specialist support. Mm. Now, by um, saying that there should be no restrictions on that kind of material online, you're basically saying that we only are interested in tackling child sexual abuse after the event, that it's fine for this material to be produced which involves the sexual abuse of a child and then distributed and then viewed and that's of course extremely problematic because we know that obviously child sexual abuse predated the internet but the internet is a significant mm. tool that child sexual offenders use to um, distribute and share this kind of material and that in itself knowing that that material can be viewed by so many people and for such a long period of time can be an additional trauma and can cause um, additional distress mm. to the victims and survivors of these abhorrent crimes. And, and the argument that is made that says, well, if I want to seek this stuff out, I can find it anyway online, so efforts to be preventative aren't going to work or might not work. And anyway, the precedent is that of freedom of expression and freedom of speech and personal liberty. Well, freedom of expression and freedom of speech and personal liberty are obviously principles that I personally and people in general adhere to, but we have limitations to those throughout society, and we're talking here about a fr freedom essentially to sexually abuse children and then to share that content for other people's um, mm. consumption. And I don't think anyone can argue that that's but acceptable. People are, people are saying that they, those people who look at that stuff and do that stuff should not be free from the consequences of doing that but you're right that they the preventative side of it to stop them from doing it in the first place might curtail their freedom too much for some people no, so, so yeah, so what I'm saying is that when it comes to something as abhorrent and serious as child sexual mm. abuse, I think most people would agree that prevention um, is much more important than dealing with perpetrators after a child has been sexually abused, after that damage and trauma has already, you know, been caused. Um, and I think, you know, that that's the key thing here. We should also remember that um, the police and criminal justice agencies are not particularly well resourced at the moment i don't speak for them but i'm sure that they would say you know that that these are massive issues that they're doing their best to tackle but that require huge resources do we simply want to rely on criminal justice responses to these very serious crimes after the event and say that that is enough i don't mm. think that we do i think as a society we want to see actually the elimination of child sexual abuse and banning this kind of material from the internet and doing our best to enforce that is just one way in which we can contribute towards a world that's free of the sexual violence towards and abuse mm. of children katie i'm really grateful for your time thank you katie russell who is the national spokesperson for rape crisis in england and wales let's come on to your calls loads of you getting in touch about this john's in wolverhampton to kick us off hi john hello there thanks for taking my call today you're welcome you're welcome um first thing i want to do before bringing my point is say this i absolutely condemn jihadist videos i absolutely condemn child abuse images and child abuse videos of that ilk i absolutely condemn uh, the forms of terrorism that are taking place in this world and for the record i stand for lira um, but at the same time if we have freedoms which are enshrined in law then what is the point in them just being woolly freedoms to do things that are approved if you have freedom of expression then I have the freedom to offend, I have the freedom to disagree, I have the freedom to argue, and uh, as long as I am not in myself inciting someone else while I'm exercising my freedoms to commit a crime, I should have the freedom within the law to do that. So it you should have the not freedom be... within the law to yes. go and search out images of this nature if you want to? No. 
because the law says that images of those nature are illegal. Yes. But that doesn't mean that doesn't mean that it's illegal to view child pornography absolutely in this country. Right. I, I'm sorry, that's the wrong phraseology. I'm, child your sexual last exploitation, was yes, quite right. absolutely right. Child sexual abuse images. Child nobody, and nobody is suggesting that anybody would like to water down the laws around that. But your, your point no, is absolutely. that if we're to say that we are genuinely free as individuals, there shouldn't mm -hmm. be any barrier put in anybody's way to do any Thing they want to do as long as it is within the actual law it shouldn't uh, uh, but i don't understand that because is, viewing child well, sexual take, abuse is not within the law that is a that take, is a crime so why let's take why, a different why is it that giving people the freedom to to basically take the brakes off it stop all efforts to go and try and bring this stuff down because it's in, impacting on people's freedom of expression i think in, in my world <laughs> i'm happy to have my freedom curtailed in order that these images Images aren't available to people. So what you're saying then is that you're giving up freedom to gain security. Yes. And a uh, society who gives up freedom to gain security deserves neither. That was stated very clearly by Franklin D. Roosevelt. But it's a freedom that I don't know why you want people to have that particular freedom. But I'm not. I'm not saying that. If we take the example of jihadist videos, let's let's take it out of the emotive uh, position of child sexual abuse for a moment and look mm -hmm. at jihadist videos. Mm -hmm. There is no doubt that those jihadist videos are inciting violence. Completely. So they so they would not fit within the legal definition of freedom of speech. The the quote I made that you should have the freedom to offend, that you should have the freedom to argue, that you should have the freedom to disagree, that you should have the freedom to express unapproved, unorthodox views is not my view, it's the view of the House of Lords but from I, a very I, famous I, I, I agree, case a few I, years ago. I do, I agree with that view. You And you do have the freedom to express all sorts of opinions in various different ways, using various different forms of language. You know, John, as well as everybody else listening to this programme, that if you express views in certain ways and use certain forms of language, you are going to feel the consequences of that, because guess what? Freedom has consequences. John, I appreciate the call. Thank you. Jane's in Liverpool. Hi, Jane. Um, hi. What I wanted to say was that um, I know Claire Fox says some, well, what I think are sort of odd things, but... Um, I'm appalled that someone with her um, platform has got people taking notice of her, like you're talking about what she's saying, mm -hmm. uh, comes across to me as in some ways morally bankrupt because what she's advocating is that the internet, the World Wide Web, should be like um, the Wild West where sort of anything goes, but if somebody does something wrong, then the sheriff can try to... Um, um, come after them. It's just such... Um, I mean, I don't know anything about her, but she sounds like what people would typically call a privileged white woman in the sense that... Mm, I, don't, if she, I don't know why her race is important or why her colour is well, important. I'll just tell you why. Because if you're not from a minority background, and I am, uh, whatever that background is, and it's not relevant to this, mm -hmm. um, and you've never been, had lies, racial lies told about you and your people, that people then listen to if it's someone that they respect, you know, as old Claire Fox, she's, she's clever, and, and that then affect you. You know, yeah. because so, and that's just one. So example. she, she's, she's what, she's doing what from that privileged position? Then she's giving a view that she feels so, she's so, able to give from a position of privilege because she's never had that privilege challenge before. No, no. What I mean is, if she'd been in in a position where, um, I mean, she might have been, but she sounds like someone who's never been in a position who's been affected by abuse of any sort. Now mm. we're talking about. Um, child um you know, well, I would argue, I, I would suggest that, and again, being really careful over the the words we use here, that it's not a privileged position to be in a position where you haven't been abused. It's your right. <laughs> it's not. A, it's not like something that you should uh, have to fight for to be in a privileged position where you haven't been abused. It is absolutely your right to not to uh, not to have been abused in the first place. Jane, thank you. David in Wembley. Hi, David. Oh, uh, Tom. Yes, I, I think people are getting mixed up between actions and words here, or, or uh, sounds. Now, I said to your producer that I've been exposed to all this nonsense. You know, I'm Jewish. I've, I've, 
I got used to Jewish insults by the time I was uh, finishing primary school and, and people say that has no effect on me. And, you know, if you're exposed to seeing things or hearing things, it's all on the news. We see the most horrific things on the news. It's mm -hmm. part of life. Mm -hmm. And you can't censor life itself. And, and Claire Fox is absolutely right because the crimes are crimes. If somebody... You know, we have a Venn diagram here, and in America they've got the First Amendment, I think it is, where they, they're not f full of uh, crime and much worse than we are because uh, they've got free speech in their constitution. It's an example to us, and we, we shouldn't go the But we've got free speech. Way. I don't understand. We haven't. What, why? We haven't. Why haven't we got... Be in what way because do we not have free every, speech? Everybody I know on Twitter and Facebook has been banned for saying pretty sensible things in your which view. disagreed. In your yeah, view. Yeah, but the point is, why should they be banned at, at all? And, and poor old Toby Young, who I, I can mention because he's my friend, said silly nice. things on Twitter six or seven years ago. Paul Bloke lost his job, as did that well, you professor can, who you, said jokes about women. People's lives are being ruined by, by simple well, things. Well, you can talk about, say. you can certainly talk about the outrage mob and people, mm. the, the Twitterati who, you know, come after people for saying, putting a word out of place and all the rest of it. I, and I... I, I have some sympathy with that, but that's not to say that there's no freedom. <laughs> you have the freedom to say what you like. You just have to face the consequences of doing that. You can certainly have a, a, a an argument about whether the consequences are fair for what it is that you're saying. But I'm afraid the idea that there isn't such a thing as a free, of, of freedom of speech or expression and it doesn't exist in this country is just plain wrong, David, to be honest. 0345, thank you, 0345 6060 text 84850, tweet at at LBC. Many more of your calls to come. Loads of you getting in touch about this one. Uh, let's come back to your calls on what Claire Fox has been saying about personal freedom and the limits on personal freedom. Julia is a new caller in Camden. Hi, Julia. Hello, hi. Hello. Um, yeah, I was quite stunned at the, first of all, the comments made by the original, um, I can't remember the name, this lady's name at the moment, but the original comments made by the, the sort of potential politician. Claire but Fox. I was yeah. really worried by the amount of support that she was receiving from other people. I am, I am a barrister and I used to work as a criminal barrister, so I um, unfortunately had to deal with a lot of these cases during my career of child sexual abuse. Mm. And it is not true to say that child sexual abuse stops when the video camera stops recording. These images, if they go online, they are continuing to perpetuate that abuse against children. And it isn't the case that you can weigh against a child's right to, or you can say there's an equality between a child's right no, not to be isn't. abused and an individ individual's freedom to watch whatever they want on the internet. Freedom of speech or expression isn't an absolute right. It's a, a right that has to be balanced against other people's rights. Yes. The right not to be abused, a child not to be abused, and for that abuse not to be perpetuated must override an individual's freedom of expression or freedom of speech. And anyone who thinks differently to that, I, I, I'm assuming, and, and most people obviously won't have had access to this sort of material to realise just how disturbing it is. Mm. But you couldn't possibly say that your right to look at anything on the internet um, trumps someone else's right not to have that abuse perpetuated over and over again. So in the, in the balancing of those freedoms, and I think the, the one about child sexual, sexual exploitation is so, it's so overwhelmingly the case that, of course, those freedoms aren't in balance, mm. that it feels very, very odd to try, try and make the case that they are, as Claire Fox well, you can't. And, yeah. and there's also but, currency in child sexual abuse. People put these online, not because the, they just want to share it, but because it makes money for the people who abuse these children. There is a whole um, criminal network which buys and sells mm. these images. So, so you're by perpetuating. not removing them, yeah. we are committing another crime, and another crime against the children. It's, it's as simple as do, that. Do you think, though, that there is, a, there is a genuine debate to be had about the balance between personal and individual freedom and uh, freedom to do what you like on the internet at the expense of other people's freedom when it comes to things like watching jihadi videos or any other kinds of content where people get quite upset at the idea that it's being banned? The porn ban, for example, people are very upset about. Well, in the porn ban, I don't think, I mean, in the porn ban as in, as in adult porn. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's the same with everything in life. No one gets upset when we put a age restriction on certain videos for what is or isn't appropriate for certain people to watch at certain times, the watersheds on the television. The internet has become a sort of a, of a wild west. We're able to put anything, or people think they're able to put anything on it or say whatever they want at any given time. And that can't be the case. And it's odd how we don't accept certain behavior 
and when we face people on, on a day-to-day basis. But because we've put it online, mm. people seem to think that all bets are off when it comes to what is just common decency. Yes. And, and, and my, freedom, my freedom to look at whatever I want on the internet can't be absolute any more than if I was 16 years old trying to get into an X-rated film in the cinema. My right would be absolute to go and do that. It wouldn't be appropriate for mm. that to happen. Uh, and... And also things like, as we were talking in the last hour, to carry a knife or carry a gun and all the rest of it. Julia, great to talk to you. Thank you. 0345 6060973. If you just join the programme, we'll play you a bit of what Claire Fox had to say so that you're right up to date with the comments that she has made. Uh, and then you can give me a ring to tell me what you make of them. I think it's, it is fascinating but odd frankly, that she would use the example particularly of child sexual abuse in all of this. Who, who is wanting to be on the side of anybody who wants to look at this stuff, as Julia has explained, because you are perpetuating that abuse. You are helping to monetize that abuse. Twitter and Facebook, says Julian, are private companies who can impose whatever rules they want on their platforms. People mistakenly think of these as free speech platforms, he says. Uh, Christine, Tom, I'm thrilled that I'm not on any form of social media. The more I hear about the internet, the more I hate it, she says. Paul's in Ealing. Hi, Paul. Hi, how are you? I'm well. What do you make of what Claire Fox has said, the balance of personal um, freedom? I, I, I just think it's absolutely bizarre. It's 2019, and the female caller on just prior to me, I forget her name, uh, before the Julia. break. Julia. Uh, uh, Julia, you absolutely hit the nail on the head. I mean, it sounds like she's got experience in actual... She's a lawyer, by, a, by what she was saying, yeah. Legally right, trained. so I, I, I mean, I, I trained at law school uh, and decided not to go into it, thankfully. Um, but, what, I mean, there, there are all sorts of laws um, governing free speech. I mean, free speech isn't indiscriminate free speech. Like, on, under Article 10 of the Human Rights Act 1998, everybody's got the right to freedom of expression mm. in the UK, but that same law states that it might be subject to formalities or conditions or restrictions. And they might be, for example, uh, territorial integrity or public safety, the prevention of disorder or crime, uh, health or morals, and I forget the last one. But, protection but, of reputation of rights. You're right, Paul. So, I'm, I'm not going to argue with that because I agree with you on this. But, but do you have some sympathy f with those people who say, well, the checks that we've put on that have gone a bit too far? I can't that, think of an example uh, off the top of my head. No, but absolutely. And I would be normally one of these, uh, I mean, I, I admire the work of liberty. I admire the work of, of, of people that uh, endeavour to make our, our, our speech remain free. However, this is an entirely different, entirely different arena. Child sexual abuse is an entirely different arena. Whereas you might be able to argue something politically mm -hmm. or, uh, or, or perhaps in terms of the law, you, you might be able to argue that there are, there are restrictions on freedom of speech which are meaning that our society wouldn't work as it should, as it's, as it's destined to, as it's designed to. But in terms of child sexual abuse, it's not a crime in the same way that uh, a driving offence is a crime or mm. an assault is a crime. Um, you might hit somebody on a night out in a town centre. Sure, it's that's, a different degree sort of, a, of criminality, isn't it? Absolutely, that's, yeah. that's different chance. What, what, what sexual abuse, what, the, the problem with having sexual abuse images that are free and available on the internet and that there's no regulation against is that people who are perhaps, what, what, I can't think of a better way to put it, but what a horribly inept word, casual uh, offenders, in, insofar as they're thinking about offending mm, mm. or they're Don't make it so easy about, for them, is, is the point. No, absolutely make, right, right, because, because it's, it's fueling a fire. But once they find out that there are, there is material that is non-governable, that is entirely legal on the internet, if, perhaps if they don't download them, mm. but there is a website that streams them, for example, then the website website is taking the brunt of the of the uh, uh, of of the of any sort of legal repercussions. And you're free to do that legally. You're free to watch the same videos that are governed and are outlawed. The distribution of such, which is illegal. So you are you're free to watch yeah, those so, indiscriminately. So those um, who are making the argument that Claire Fox is not siding with people who watch this stuff or or the stuff that they are watching, but by allowing them to in a free internet space. She is, in effect, she is unfortunately on the side of the people who would like to watch this stuff, even though she doesn't think it's good that they're watching it. 
she sounds like a very smart woman, so I, I don't want to put words into her no, mouth no, no, or, or, no. or anything like that. But, but nonetheless, yes, that's that's absolutely what I'm saying. Well, well, I'm saying that on this particular issue, this particular issue, and the way that these sexual uh, sexual crimes against children are, are, are harboured and the way that they, the way that they take place means that if there is any safe space and in any way mm. they appear to be being condoned be it by a lack of law governing streaming or a lack of law governing the ability to check them out on the internet, then it is in some way condoning. Yeah, and on the basis that the, the, the balance is tipped on the side of those who want the personal freedom to be able to look at it. I mean, that, it seems remarkable that that could be the argument. And Paul, I, I completely accept that we are not here to put words in people's mouths, which is why I think it's important to listen to what Claire Fox actually says to The Telegraph when she does so, because it's not just uh, jihadi videos or child sexual abuse. It's, from her own words, everything. Just to be quite clear, then, about. You, you don't think charity videos should be banned, but you do think child pornography should be banned on the internet. I think child pornography itself is illegal, and therefore it wouldn't exist. But yet. the videos... But the vi I, I do not want to give the state and the authorities the right to ban things on the internet. No ifs. It's hard, that, of being abolished know, nowadays. It's important to not constantly be threatened and terrorised into backing off from a free speech position because vile people use that speech to, uh, and abuse that speech to say or, or, or do horrible things. So interesting, isn't it? I don't want the government to have the right to ban things on the internet. Paul's in Crowborough in East Sussex. Hi, Paul. Hi, Tom. Uh, well, as, as the last poll commented, uh, Claire Fox might be a very smart woman, but, um, you know, stupidity is the prerogative of the intelligence, and uh, I, I should know that. Um, <laughs> she is incredibly misguided on this. Yeah, massively. Um, it, you know, the, the not condoning this, etc., but is a real red herring. Uh, well, everything, every, everything in that sentence before the but doesn't matter, does it, really? Once you've in, no, once that, you've put that's the right. It, it, it's superfluous to actually what the um, actual point is here. That, uh, as a society, um, really, we're, we're measured by how we look after the most vulnerable. And any society is really best measured like that. And this obviously doesn't, but I'd, I'd like to get away from the emotive area, mm. actually, because Do, yeah. I think there's a fundamental um, misunderstanding of what freedom actually is. Now, if, if we look at freedom and say, well, it means that we can do and say whatever we like under any circumstances, I'm afraid reality is going to slap us in the face because at every point of our life, we are constrained. Okay, it's always, so if we're an artist and we were free to paint the best picture that we could, we're going to stick it in a frame. We're going to have a framework. And society, by its very nature, has a framework. So what you're saying, what you're saying Paul, and this is going to upset a lot of people, you're saying there is no such thing as total freedom. Absolutely correct. It's, that's the reality of it. And I realise a lot of people are going to be upset by that. Because for many, many years, people have been told that there is no limit to freedom. But there are limits to freedom. I, I don't know that how that's... I, I, I really don't... Uh, and people will find that, what you said, Paul, uh, annoying and wrong. I don't know how you can argue that it is annoying and wrong. We all accept, don't we, that in a society that has to be governed by rules and laws that we all accept, you have to have balance your freedom against the freedom of others. <laughs> it, otherwise, the whole thing breaks down. Uh, absolutely. You know, our social... And we aren't just individuals, aren't we? You know, we? We live in a society, and we choose to live in that society, and now it's quite a global society. It's nonetheless a society, mm. isn't it? And, and th there's got to be a structure for it, and the, the society has to be for the health of the people so where do you think it. where do you think, then, Paul, this idea that we're not free... Uh, we don't have freedom of speech and we don't have enough freedom of speech that a lot of people talk about. Where do you think that comes from and how, do you ex how would you go about explaining to those people that you are, but you're always, always going to be constrained in that freedom, wherever you live? 
I, I think I, I tend to see society as very reaction, action, reaction, action, reaction. You, you get these large swathes of action and reaction, don't you? You know, this is why things get polarised. Now, uh, there are times and circumstances whereby freedom of speech is suppressed in order to drive agenda. OK, and, and, and that, that goes on all the time in, How do you in mean, uh, briefly? some level. Uh, I'm trying to think of a, a, a good example, actually, Tom, but I'm, I'm a bit caught at the moment. I'm to, um, I, 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 Paul, I, w- I will spare you your blushes in trying to think of an example. I'm not, I don't know of an example either where an agenda is pushed by limiting the ability of certain people to speak about it. Um, but there are people who have looked at the way that certain things haven't been talked about because of worries over offence, for instance. You look at the child abuse scandals in Rotherham and feel that that is a limitation on freedom of speech. They are, again, I'm afraid, wrong.